Hey guys, we're back on part two of our fusible applique video with the Ditta of Laundry Basket Quilts and she's shown us everything about how to prepare your block. And so I'm super excited for you to show me how to put the stitching on. We had fun preparing the blocks and I noticed you love pressing and all quilters love pressing, love ironing and sometimes we do a little bit too much of it. So before we go into stitching, let's go and look at our blocks. I this is the one we prepared to together and you did a fantastic job. Notice how soft it is, how the fusible webbing did not come through. And I prepare one that I slightly overpress for you guys, just so you see how stiff it gets. So you have to pay attention to it and don't overpress. Easy does it. We're not frying crispy chicken. We're just doing gentle applique. Now let's go into the stitches. There is many ways that we can secure the fusible applique in place. And I prepare a few of my favorites. One of my personal favorite is using nylon invisible thread. And I like to use the Aurofil thread. And there is many invisible threads on the market. You can use polyester thread, you can use a nylon. And what I like to do is I use a small zigzag. Nylon invisible thread is on the top on my sewing machine. When you set up your sewing machine, you have to remember that uh, any invisible threads have a stretch to it, so you have to lower the tension, and I lower mine just about to one. Then in a bobbin, I always place a cotton thread. Why do I always use a cotton thread? Because I don't have to adjust the tension then. The tension in a bobbin uh, stays exactly how you would do a traditional sewing, so cotton thread in a bobbin. And why I also like it, it gives me nice foundation to hold my stitch. Now, I adjusted the tension on the top because I don't want my top thread to pull the bobbin thread to the top and create like little dots on my applique. So I did not want that. I also switch a needle in my sewing machine. When you do fusible applique, you want to use either embroidery needle or macrotex needle. The macrotex needle is one of my personal favorite. So now we're going to make a zigzag stitch and the zigzag stitch has to be just about one eighth of an inch width. It has to cover the edge of your applique and hold your applique piece down. Many times I get to be asked, uh, do I use stabilizer on the back? I don't. I Pre-press my fabrics. Remember, we pressed it gently with best press. The background got nice and stiff. I then fuse my piece in place and my fusible webbing is the stabilizer that holds everything nice and secure. So this is how I do my applique. I also have done this zigzag stitch for you with a cotton thread on the top. And I use the funky orange thread, one of my personal favorite, to show up the stitch. Notice the stitch again, one eight. And what I like to do when I finish my applique, I start right here, I go all the way around. The position of your needle and the position of your applique, the needle should be on the outside. Yes, right on the outside, right here. And you zigzag. You don't want to touch with the needle the edge of your applique because then you will fray the applique yourself. So nice zigzag, go all the way around. When you come to a pivot point, needle position down helps you keep the spot where you're stitching, lift the foot and keep on going around. And you have to remember that your sewing machine only sew straight. So stopping, lifting the foot, keeping the needle down, but moving your fabric is very important. If you don't stop and do that, you're going to be stretching and pulling on your applique and it's going to be wavy. So stopping needle position down, super important. When I finish my applique, I like to pull the threads to the back. And then later on, I'm going to, if the background fabric is see-through, like light fabric, white, off-white, then I have to pull my threads into the seam with a needle. If my background fabric is darker or has a print, I can just leave the threads laying down. Remember, don't clip them too short because if you clip them very short, they like to pop up on this side and that's not what we want to do. So you don't backstitch? No. What okay. I like to do is I go around and I stitch over so I overlap the stitch in an invisible zigzag 
and this applique. So when I came back here, I actually stitched a little bit over. And look at this thread, it's still on this side, you can hardly see it. So this nylon invisible thread, this one is smoky, it's look almost like a hair. It's just very invisible and it uh, goes great with natural colors. Uh, if you want to work with pastels and 1930s reproduction or brights, I recommend use the milky, what it's the lighter one. For my colors, batiks and darker ones, I like to use the smoky one. Another stitch that you can use, and this one is one that you can really show off how uh, uh, the detail work and bring a little bit more color to your applique and really enjoy some of the beautiful threads that we have. This is a jelly bean collection of threads and they're perfectly matching my batiks and they're just small package. This package is plenty of threads to make this quilt that it's behind us and those are the threads I used on the quilt behind us. In this case I'm not matching to my heart because I want to show you my thread. So again, I chose the funky orange right here to show you my thread. And what I'm doing here is I chose a stitch on my sewing machine and again, in a bobbin 2370, just this basic thread. In the top, I'm using a color to match the color of my applique and I'm gonna use a blanket stitch, go all the way around. When I finish again, I'm gonna pull the threads to the back and weave them through the stitch so that way they hide back there. And this one is one of my personal favorite simply because I can make projects very quickly with this fusible applique. This one calls raw edge. The other ones that we looked at it were finish edge fusible applique. We have put a stitch around the edges and finished the edges. This is raw edge applique. For raw edge applique, you pre-quilt a background, so you use a layer of backing, bedding, quilt top, and you quilt it, and you can use an overall design. Then you place your applique piece down, you press it, and you use a simple straight stitch and you stitch it down, staying again one aid on the inside of your applique piece. This is a fun technique for small project, table runners, wall hanging. I hope you're gonna try this one. And you back, did you back stitch or you overstitched here? I overstitched. I came back here and overstitched and pulled the threads to the back again together and I'm gonna weave them into the bedding with a needle to hide them. And then this might fray later. Is that right? Yes, I would love it to fray. I actually look forward to the edges come up, fray a little bit and give me like a three-dimensional look to it. I use this technique on seasonal silhouettes, a lot of my art quilts. It's a great technique and I use it on a table runners. I like that little bit extra texture to it and it's a very quick technique to do it. Yeah, so just to recap, on our finished edge, we've got a buttonhole stitch and a zigzag stitch. Yes. And then if you want it to fray, you would just use a straight stitch. Yes. On all of these, we're using an eighth of an inch wide, and we're pulling the threads to the back, and we're overstitching, not backstitching, which is a good technique because I've always backstitched, and that's obviously not the right way to do it. Where if you uh, have a locking option in your sewing machine, like when you can start with a locking, mm -hmm. then when you come to the stitch, you can lock again okay. or backstitch. But because I'm sewing, uh, just starting without a locking stitch, it overlapping just secures the beginning and the, and end. the end and ties it all together. So, and what I like to do, this is a cute little tip for you, Kimberly, if you want to try some applique. What I do for myself, first of all, I always practice. I don't go ahead and jump into my beautiful block and start stitching right on this block. I always take uh, some swatches of fabric and practice some stitches. And as I practice new stitches or just kind of refresh the old stitches, I like to make myself a guide. Adita, thank you so much for showing us all of your applique tricks. I know that we are all going to use them in our studio. Thank you so much. Oh, it was my pleasure. Thank you for having me.